Hi, this is Graham Helfrich, Technical Advisor Manager for the Engineering Software here at IHS Market. Welcome to the weekly Did You Know episode where we learn how to do something of value that you probably didn't know about your IHS Market engineering software. Today we're going to be talking about how to forecast production from your secondary fluid and it's going to be using ratio forecasting. Okay, now just to kind of kick this off, I want to talk about this gentleman. His name is Fibonacci. He's an Italian mathematician. He was born in 1170. And he's famous for something. I'm going to show you that right now. So if we open Excel, we type a 0, a 1, and we add those up, we get 1, right? So we added these. Now what if we add the next two together, basically the 1 and the result when we sum these two. Okay, so now we're going to go equal sum these two. Okay, and I get two. So I can basically continue that process forward and this sequence is called the Fibonacci sequence. Okay, and it can go on forever, but there's something that's interesting about this. Okay, what I want to do is I want to compare the ratio of this number compared to the number prior to it and basically this big number compared to the number prior to it. So we're going to do that. Okay. Now one thing you notice is once we get to about here, the number becomes 1.6 or the ratio. 1.61 and it keeps that ratio no matter how large we make the number in the first column. So this is called the Fibonacci ratio or it's also called phi. Now why is this important? Well if we draw a box, a rectangle, and on this side we make this a ratio of 1 and on this side we make a ratio of that 1.61 or that ratio, so 1 to 1.61. Again this is that phi symbol. What we can do is using the these ratios for the box we can draw a line here and actually maintain that ratio where this is 1 and now this is 1.6. Okay, so we can actually keep dividing that and the ratios are going to maintain themselves. Okay, now why does this matter? Well, you're actually going to find this sort of ratio used a lot in Roman and other kinds of architecture and there's a lot of very famous artists who are totally obsessed with this ratio, this Fibonacci ratio. Now another thing is if you look at your credit card you're going to notice that it actually uses this same Fibonacci ratio for proportions so it's aesthetically pleasing. Uh, if we keep moving you may recognize this. This is something called the golden spiral. In fact the golden ratio is kind of what we're talking about here in this story. So from the spiral what's really crazy is we actually find this shape and this ratio in nature everywhere we look. In seashells like this we find it a lot in the human body. In fact let me show you something that might blow your mind a little bit. So if we hold our arm out and we go from our shoulder to our fingertips if we use our elbow we have a ratio of 1 here and 1.6 for that piece. Now if we go a little further and we go from our elbow to our fingertips now the wrist is going to be our middle point and so from this this is a ratio of 1 this is 1.6. If we keep going down to our hand from our wrist to our fingertips this is 1 this is 1.6 and we can break it down even further this is 1, this is 1.6. So we find this all over in nature. Now even the human heartbeat, the rhythm of our heart has this ratio of 1 and 1 1.6. Now we can look at things like this and start to wonder, okay, is this real or are we, are we just going crazy? Or is our mind making things up? But even going down to the DNA. DNA has two grooves in its spiral and with this golden ratio of 1.6 being the proportion of the major and the minor grooves. This is what we actually find all the way down to DNA. Now let's go on another scale. We find for storms like hurricanes, we find this golden spiral occurs naturally. If we look to outer space, we find this ratio is found on things 
like planets here we can see the rings and the planet and the ratio continues here as well and we can go even farther out like this so is this real I don't know but I sure found it interesting to find this ratio everywhere this golden ratio now imagine if there is a way to quickly and more reliably forecast your secondary fluids like condensate or gas well, that's exactly what we're going to look at right now in Harmony Enterprise. All right, so what I'm about to show you is using Harmony Enterprise version 2019.3. It's coming out in the middle of December 2019. So this is brand new at the time of this posting. So I've got a gas condensate. Well, gas is actually my primary fluid. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a decline and we're going to do gas. But instead of just doing rate versus time, we're also going to add a CGR for this well. Okay, so we've got our gas, our condensate rate, and our CGR posted here. We're going to go ahead and, and do a gas decline, so a decline on the primary fluid. It's gone ahead and done that. And now I'm going to do a CGR forecast. Okay, right here. So it automatically attaches it to the CGR trend. Now with this, you can manipulate it, and one of the really cool things is you can actually add different segments in time. I'm going to show that, but First thing we want to do is we say, how do we create a condensate forecast using our gas as our kind of control and our ratio to produce a condensate forecast? Well, all we need to do is drag the ratio into the interpretation and now we have a condensate forecast. And you can see how when we manipulate the CGR forecast, the condensate rate is responding. Um, now if you want to have a different slope you can adjust this down up maybe we want, want to add a segment so we can add a second segment like this uh, now right now it's going to kind of connect them together like you see here but if you want to make a step change then you can just kind of unlock them from each other and then there'll be this sort of step change in the CGR if you want Okay, so uh, one thing is if you only make the CGR trend go this far, it will assume a constant CGR into the future. Okay, so I think this is pretty uh, amazing actually. When, when I see how people have to do this manually right now, it is brutal. Okay, okay, so let me show you some other ways to use this. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to automate this on a whole bunch of wells. Let's check it out. All right, in this case, I've actually got an oil well. So oil is a primary fluid and gas is a secondary fluid. So we're going to go ahead and do an oil decline and we're going to add a GOR. So we have our, our oil, our gas, our GOR here. We'll do an oil decline. That's our primary fluid. Okay. And now, of course, as always, if we aren't happy with the initial match, we can modify it. Okay, next what we're going to do is our... GOR ratio trend and it puts it through automatically like that and next we are going to connect these together and we will produce a gas forecast like that okay so we can adjust any of our interpretations here our ratio forecast Okay, just like that. So, how do we automate this? So I'm going to call this my oil forecast with GOR and gas. Okay, that's just the name of my interpretation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this as a workflow. Okay, so we're going to call this our oil decline analysis and GOR workflow. So what we're going to do here is we're going to pick a whole bunch of other wells here. I think I've got, well, let's actually see how many I've got selected here. Okay, I have about 327 wells that I want to apply this on. So let's go ahead and apply this workflow. Here it is, oil decline analysis and GOR workflow. Okay, so it's all done. Let's go check out one of the wells to see what happened. 
Okay, so we see it automatically put the decline on. It automatically started our GOR trend for us. And we can extend that if we want or change the interpretation. And the resulting gas forecast will occur for us right there. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is, of course, get all of these forecasts out to our reserves software. So just as you know, I've shown in other videos, you can do exports to Aries, Valnav, PhD, Win, or Mosaic. So in this case, I'll send it out to Aries. I can pick all the wells. Okay. And here is the result. We get the API number, we get the oil decline, and then the GOR is right here. And this is for all 300 and some wells for a single dump to your Aries or Reserve software just to do the economics. Okay, the last thing I want to show you is something I'm super excited about. It's about a type well, but it's actually about type ratios. Why would you even want to use that? So let's just imagine that we are going to be drilling a new well right here and we consider these wells to be analogous maybe they're all the same vintage etc so I'm gonna put those wells I'm gonna make a type well I'll do an oil type well at our decline so this is going to be our oil type well the new thing that we're going to do is a GOR type well. Okay, so under type well, instead of doing rate, we're going to do ratio. So you can also do CGR if you're dealing with condensate wells, but this is a GOR, and this is our average GOR. Pretty cool. Okay, we're going to put a trend line through this. Okay, so you can make this single or multi segment trend line, whatever you want. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're actually going to copy these to our clipboard. Okay, so what that means is copy to clipboard and for our oil type well, we're also going to copy that to our uh, clipboard right here. Okay, now this is the future well. This is the PUD well in white, right? It has no history, but we need a forecast. We need to give it a forecast. So, so we're going to go ahead and do an oil rate versus time plot plus a GOR like this. So this is for the future well. We need to give it a forecast. We'll drag over our type well. There it is. We'll drag over our GOR trend. There's our trend line and we're going to drag these together and link them. Okay, now all I have to do is view the gas forecast here. Okay, so now for our PUD well, we have our type well for oil, we have our type GOR, and as a result, we have our calculated gas rate for this PUD well. It's super cool. Now, once this well actually starts production with oil, we can adjust the peak rate to match the real production, and once we get a real GOR, we can actually adjust the slope or trend or initial GOR to update our gas forecast. It's so easy. I see people using Excel to do this. It's such a nightmare. So this is built into Harmony Enterprise version 2019.3, which is coming out in December 2019. So really, what does this even mean for you? I, I, this has been one of our most requested functions in Harmony Enterprise. So I know if you are doing this in any sort of manual way right now, you are going to love this. I can't wait to see how much time you're going to be able to save. The other thing is if you're automatically or manually doing declines, one decline for the primary fluid and a second decline for the secondary fluid, that may be time consuming. It may not be reliable, but what I've shown you here is a way that you can do this more reliably and super quick. Now here's a question. Would Fibonacci have loved the ratio forecasting in Harmony? I think so. And that's it. Thanks for your time. If you have any questions, just give me a call or email me and subscribe to be notified of next week's episode.